Having made the decision to refuse to simply live as society demands, to submit to an imposed existence, we have put ourselves into a position of being in permanent conflict with the social order. This conflict will manifest in many different situations, evoking the intense passions of the strong-willed. Just as we demand of our loves and our friendships a, a fullness and intensity that this society seeks to suppress, we want to bring all of ourselves to our conflicts as well, particularly our conflict with the society, so that we struggle with all the strength necessary to accomplish our aims. It is in this light, as anarchists, that we would best understand the place of hatred. The present social order seeks to rationalize everything. It finds passion dangerous and destructive, since such intensity of feeling is, after all, opposed to the cold logic of power and profit. There is no place in this society for passionate reason, or the reasonable focusing of passion. When the efficient functioning of the machine is the highest social value, both passion and living human reason are detrimental. Cold rationality based on a mechanistic view of reality is necessary for upholding such a value. In this light, the campaigns against hate promoted not only by every progressive and reformist, but also by the institutions of power which are the basis of social inequalities, that incorporate bigotry into the very structure of the society, make sense on several levels. And when I refer to equality and inequality in this article, I am not referring to, quote, equality of rights, which is a legal abstraction, but to the concrete differences in access to that which is necessary in order to determine the conditions of one's life. By focusing the attempts to battle bigotry onto the passions of individuals, the structures of domination blind many well-meaning people to the bigotry that has been built into the institution of this, of this society that is a necessary aspect of its method of exploitation. Thus, the method for fighting bigotry takes a twofold path, trying to change the hearts of racist, sexist, and homophobic individuals and promoting legislation against an undesirable passion. Not only is the necessity for a revolution to destroy a social order founded on institutional bigotry and structural inequality forgotten, the state and the various institutions through which it exercises power are strengthened so that they can f suppress hate. Furthermore, though bigotry in a rationalized form is useful to the efficient functioning of the social machine, an individual passion of too much intensity, even when funneled into the channels of bigotry, presents a threat to the efficient functioning of the social order. It is unpredictable, a potential point for the breakdown of control. Thus, it must necessarily be suppressed, and only permitted to exercise itself in the channels that have been carefully constructed by the rulers of the society. But one of the aspects of this emphasis on hate and individual passion, rather than on institutional inequalities, that is most useful to the state, is that it permits those in power and their media lapdogs to equate the irrational and bigoted hatred of white supremacists and gay bashers with the reasonable hatred that the exploited who have, been who have risen in revolt feel for the masters of this society and their lackeys. Thus, the suppression of hatred serves the interests of social control and upholds the institutions of power, and, hence, the institutional inequality necessary to its functioning. Those of us who desire the destruction of power, the end of exploitation and domination, cannot let ourselves succumb to the rationalizations of the progressives, which only serve the interests of the rulers of the present. Having chosen to refuse our exploitation and domination, to take our lives as our own and struggle against the miserable reality that has been imposed on us, we inevitably confront an array of individuals, institutions, and structures that stand in our way, actively opposing us, the state, capital, the rulers of this order, and their loyal guard dogs, the various systems and institutions of control and exploitation. These are our enemies, and it is only reasonable that we would hate them. It is the hatred of the slave for the master, or, more accurately, the hatred of the escaped slave for the laws, the cops, the, quote, good citizens, the courts, and the institutions that seeks to hunt her down and return him to the master. And as, as with the passions of our loves and friendships, this passionate hatred is also to be cultivated and made our own, its energy focused and directed unto the development of our projects of revolt and destruction. Desiring to be the creators of our own lives and relations, to live in a world in which all that imprisons our desires and suppresses our dreams has disappeared, we have an immense task before us, the destruction of the present social order. 
hatred of the enemy, of the ruling order and all who willfully uphold it, is a, is a tempestuous passion that can provide an energy for this task that we would do well to embrace. Anarchist insurrectionaries have a way of viewing life and a revolutionary project through which to focus this energy so as to aim it with intelligence and strength. The logic of submission demands the suppression of all passions and their channeling into sentimentalized consumerism or rationalized ideologies of bigotry. The intelligence of revolt embraces all passions, finding in them not only the mighty weapons for the battle against this order, but also the wonder and joy of a life lived to the full.